Welcome back everyone, it's Show Thought I'm Up, coming at you through week 9, waiver wire pickups that you're not going to want to miss. Playoffs are going to be starting up, so you want to get some more depth on your bench because injuries happen. We've seen it with Derrick Henry this past week, so stick around to find out who those players are. Starting off with running backs, we have Jeremy McNichols and Ty Johnson. Jeremy McNichols is coming in as one of our top pickups of the week, with Derrick Henry expected to miss six to eight weeks with a foot injury. So I really like the upside of Jeremy McNichols in Derrick Henry's absence, who is a huge part of this offense. They're not going to be able to run the ball like they usually do. I mean, they give Derrick Henry 30 carries a game. They're not going to be able to do that with any running back they can get. So they usually use Jeremy McNichols as the pass catching back. So I believe they're going to be throwing the ball a whole lot more, which means Jeremy McNichols will benefit from this. So he's only 2% owned and he's definitely available in leagues and someone that you may want to check out. Next, we have Ty Johnson. Ty Johnson's only 5% owned throughout leagues out there. And over the past couple of weeks, he has been pretty productive, getting six targets this past week and seven targets the week before that and averaging 10 fantasy points over the last three weeks. Now, I understand those numbers aren't crazy, but I really like his upside on a team that is constantly passing the ball and they like to use him in the passing game. You may also want to check and see if his teammate, Michael Carter, is available. I saw he's only 68% owned throughout leagues out there. I was going to put him on, but I wanted to put someone that is more widely available for you guys. So you may want to check and see if Michael Carter is available. I would pick him up over Ty Johnson, but I like Ty Johnson's upside as well. Next, we have our wide receivers, Van Jefferson and Traquan Smith. Van Jefferson is only 9% owned throughout leagues out there, and if you're looking for a wide receiver, he may be someone you want to take a look at. He's been averaging six targets a game, and he's been pretty efficient with those six targets. I understand he's on a team with Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, and Daryl Henderson, who take up a huge portion of that target share, but I really like his upside on a team that passes the ball a ton, and it seems like this team wants to give him the ball too, so I really like his upside. Next, we have Traquan Smith. Traquan Smith is only 2% owned throughout leagues out there, and I understand this team just lost their starting quarterback, Jameis Winston, to an ACL injury, but I still like the upside of this guy. Last season, after Michael Thomas was out of the lineup, Traquan Smith emerged as the wide receiver number one for the team, and I expect him to do that again this season after returning from injury a couple games ago. So if you look at the stat lines, they're not going to look pretty, but I expect the volume to increase in the next couple of weeks with a team that is hurting at wide receiver. There's been no word if Michael Thomas is going to return anytime soon, so in his absence, I expect Traquan Smith to emerge as the wide receiver number one for the team. Next, we have our tight end, Pat Faramuth. Pat Faramuth is only 8% owned throughout leagues out there, and over the past couple of weeks, he's been pretty productive. He's averaged seven targets over the last couple of games and even got a touchdown last game. So I really like the upside of this guy, and he's starting to show some consistency, and that's what I like to see for my tight end. So if you need a tight end, he may be someone you want to take a look at. Next, we have our quarterback of the week, Trevor Simeon. With the injury to Jameis Winston this past Sunday, suffering a torn ACL, ending his 2021 season, Trevor Simeon will most likely start in this week's matchup against the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta Falcons give up a lot of fantasy points to quarterbacks, so I really like the upside for him in this matchup this week. I understand it's not a pretty play, but if you're looking for a quarterback, he's 0% on, so he's definitely available in leagues, and you may be able to start him, and it may be scary, so I wouldn't watch, but I really like the upside in a favorable matchup. Last, we have our defense of the week, the New Orleans Saints. The Saints are 55% on throughout leagues out there, so there is a chance that they're not available, but if they are, they have a favorable matchup this week against the Atlanta Falcons. This defense was able to slow down Tom Brady, and I expect them to be able to slow down Matt Ryan with no problem. So I really like their matchup this week, so if you can scoop them off waivers, I would do it this week and play them. And that's going to do it for us today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And as always, don't forget, line them up! Thank you.